Welcome to Edline Academy of Science. In this video, I am going to teach you about animal body symmetry. This is part one and it is the first video of a series of videos. The name of this video series is Basics of Biology. Nearly 80% of named species of living organisms are animals. They show several main characters. Let's take one by one. The first one is multicellularity. Most of the animals are multicellular forms because their bodies are made of thousands or millions or even billions of cells. The second one is about feeding mode of animals. All animals are heterotrophic organisms. Heterotrophic organisms feed on organic matter which is produced by other organisms like plants. In other words, animals are unable to produce their own food. As such, animals feed on plants or other animals to obtain their energy requirement. The third character is internal digestion. Most animals inject food into their internal gut where the internal digestion takes place. The fourth character is about movements. Most animals are able to move their bodies from place to place, while others are able to move their body parts or body appendages such as fins, limbs and tentacles. The last character is nervous system. The movements of animals are coordinated or controlled by their nervous systems or their nervous tissue. Unfortunately, none of those five main characters are unique to animals, though they help us to recognize them. What does it mean? We cannot use these five characters to distinguish animals from plants and fungi. Why? Let's take the first character, multicellularity. Not only animals but also plants and fungi are multicellular organisms. Their bodies are also made of several thousands or millions or even billions of cells. Let's take the second character, heterotrophism. Some plants are also heterotrophic organisms. Let's take the first example. Dynia or Venus flytrap. This plant is native to east coast of USA. It catches small arthropods like insects and arachnids. Let's take the second example, Nepanthus or monkey cups. Monkeys have been observed drinking rainwater from Nepanthus. That's why botanists name these plants as monkey cups. Nepanthus also traps small insects. So, these two plant species are insectivorous. They obtain required nutrients from dying or dead bodies of trapped insects. The third main character is internal digestion. Some animals do not have a gut. The example is placasons. I am sure that most of you haven't heard about placasons. Don't worry, I will teach you about them later in this video. The next character is movements. Plants and fungi also show limited movements. Just take a look at the ornamental plants that grow inside your home. If you carefully observe these plants, you will be able to see they grow towards the sunlight. On the other hand, some animals do not move throughout their lives or at least certain period of their life cycles. For an example, porphyrins. If you take adult porphyrins, they are sessile forms and attached to the substrate. The last character is the nervous system. Some animals do not have a nervous system. Again, placasons. Placasons do not have any system at all. As such, we cannot use any of these characters to distinguish animals from plants and fungi. Now, I am going to show two characters which can be used to separate animals from plants and fungi. The two important characters are body symmetry and true tissues. These two characters are unique to animals. More importantly, these characters occur simultaneously in the evolution of animal kingdom. Let's take the first important character, body symmetry. You should know some concepts and definition regarding the basic animal architecture. 
arrangement of body appendages such as fins, limbs, tentacles and antenna in relation to the body axis is known as animal architecture. The overall shape of the animal can be described by its body symmetry and the architecture. Let's look at the types of body symmetries in animals. There are three different types. The first one is asymmetry, second one is radial symmetry, third one is bilateral symmetry. The first type of symmetry that you are going to learn is asymmetry. The body of the asymmetrical animal is not symmetrical. Importantly, they do not have any plane of symmetry. When we cut the asymmetrical body of an animal into two halves, the resultant two halves are not identical to each other. Let's look at the some examples of asymmetry. A means no symmetry. The first example is the members of Porifera. Most of the Poriferans are asymmetrical forms except very few young sponges like cycon. They do not possess any true tissues. Just take a look at this colony. This is the cycon colony. It has three individuals. We are unable to get two identical halves if we cut this colony along any of these axes. So, this is a good example for asymmetry. As I mentioned earlier, the body symmetry and origin of true tissues occur simultaneously. According to this idea, peripherans shouldn't have any true tissues. Take a look at this diagram. This is a sponge cycon and if you cut a small pieces of body wall and enlarge, you will get something like this. So this body wall has three layers, outer pinacoderm layer and inner coenoderm layer in between mesoglia. If you take pinacoderm, it consists of single layers of cells which covers the body of the sponge. An innermost coenoderm layer is also a single cell layer which covers the wall of the sponge seal or internal cavity. Under these two layers, pinacoderm layer and coenoderm layer, we are unable to see any basement membrane. So these are actually not true tissues, they are just cell layers. So, peripherans, they do not have a symmetrical body as well as they do not have true tissues. Let's take another example for asymmetrical animals. This time I'm going to take another phylum, Plylum placasoa. The first species was discovered in 1883 and rest was found recently. This phylum has one family and three genera. Each genera has a species. They are free living and mobile organisms. Placasons are found from marine aquariums. They live in shallow tropical and subtropical sea around the world. They are flat and transparent animals. The size of the animal is less than 3 mm in diameter. So placasons are asymmetrical organisms. They do not have front or back ends and right or left sides. The shape of the body is round and it has an upper and lower surfaces. The body consists of several thousands of cells and cilia. They have four different types of cells, cover cells, gland cells, fiber cells and cylinder cells. They do not have tissues or organs. So they are the simplest forms of all multicellular organisms. Take a look at this diagram. This is a placason. 
and the name of the species is Tricoplex. It has two surfaces, upper surface and lower surface. And you can see the animal with its cilia. Cilia covers all over the body. And if you cut this animal along any axis, you are unable to get two identical halves. So this is another good example for asymmetry. Let's take symmetrical animals. Except asymmetrical porphyrins and placosons, rest of the animals have symmetrical bodies. Who are those animals? Cnidarians, tenophores, platyhelminthes, nematodes, annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms, and chordates. These animals either have radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry. Let's take radial symmetry. The appendage of these animals are arranged around the central axis of the body. As such, any plane that cut through the central axis of the animal form two mirror images. The examples for the radial symmetrical animals are cnidarians like sea anemone and jellyfishes or tenophores like comb jellies and echinoderms like starfish. Now I'm going to show you one example for radial symmetry. So it's mestridium which belong to phylum cnidaria. So metridium or sea anemone has column shaped body and around the mouth it has several tentacles. If we cut this animal along any of these axes, we are able to get two identical halves. However, some radial symmetrical animals are slightly modified. As such, a very few planes are able to divide them into two mirror images. Now I am going to talk about modified radial symmetrical animals. For this, I am going to take one example that is adult starfish. The name of the species is Asterize. Just take a look at this diagram. This is starfish. It has five arms and a central disc. Over here, the central disc is not visible. If you cut this animal along any of these five axes, you will be able to get two mirror images. But if you cut this animal along any other axis, you are unable to get two mirror images. So as such, this type of symmetry is known as pentaradial symmetry. Some of the radial symmetrical animals are sessile, which means they are attached to the substrate like sea anemone or adult sponges. Rest of the radial symmetrical animals are able to move slowly but efficiently in any direction like starfishes. The very important thing to remember is radial symmetrical animals do not have distinct anterior or the posterior ends. Now you are going to learn about bilateral symmetrical animals. Bilateral symmetry is the animal body can be divided into two identical halves through a single plane which passes through the midline or the central line of the body. Take a look at this diagram. This is a frog. It belongs to phylum Chordata and class Amphibia. We can divide the body of this frog into two identical halves along this midline. There is no other line that can divide animal into two identical halves. So this is a good example for bilaterally symmetrical animal. The important feature of bilaterally symmetrical animals is that they have distinct anterior end and posterior end. The most of the sensory organs like tympanum, eyes, nostrils are located at the anterior end. 
I'm going to teach you about the second unique character, true tissues, in my next video. That is actually part two of animal body symmetry. Please hit the subscribe button so you never miss my new weekly education videos. Thank you.